Hello and welcome to Matt Parker's Maths Solutions. I'm Matt Parker and the Maths Solution this time is a day late. I do apologize for that. Yesterday on Friday when this video would normally go out, I was frantically trying to get my Spreadsheet News Network video out, which I think, I mean, it took a lot of work. We just got it out the same week as the government response when they, like, when they lost all the COVID positive data because they were using an Excel file and we just managed to turn it around. I, I think it was worth all the effort. I hope you've seen it. I hope you enjoyed it. Very proud of that video. But now it's time for the solution for the 15th puzzle um, that we've put out. And this is the Prime Pairs puzzle. Thank you very much, everyone who sent in some fantastic uh, working out for this one. What have we got? So these are the official, oops, just knocked something off my desk. Ignore that. Um, like I'm doing a second take. Uh, so the puzzle stats, we had 3,528 correct responses out of pretty much the same number, 3,565. So 99% of people got it correct. It's nice to have a puzzle that everyone gets right. And it's great that there's still uh, 3.5 kilo humans doing these puzzles. That's fantastic. Thank you all for joining in. And so if you want to have a closer look at the actual puzzle, uh, you have to rearrange all the numbers one to nine such that all adjacent pairs sum to a prime number. There were 140 different solutions. We'll get back to the word different in a moment. But there are 140 things that you could have put into the form on the website and we would mark it as correct and give you the points for getting a correct and speed bonus and everything else. Oh, and everyone else, if you just put in the numbers one to nine, we gave you giving it a go points. So, you know, thanks for giving it a go. Uh, now, um, the, the most popular one people sent in was I think probably the most obvious. So that's one, two, three, four, seven, and five are swapped, and then the rest of them, six, eight, nine, are all in the same order. And over a thousand people sent in that as their answer, and no solution went unentered. So we got all 140 solutions. I haven't shown them all here. Oliver, who runs the database, exported the top ones for me. So down to 29 people who put in that bottom one there, which uh, is oh, one of the ones that starts with nine. There you are. Little, um, little spoiler on um, different solutions. And so all 140 solutions are in there somewhere. So it's amazing that we, um, through the wisdom of the crowd, we found every single possible solution. And people sent in some of their observations. So uh, Britain here noticed that they had to go odd, even, odd, even. And that's actually a, a, th a theme we see in a lot of people's working out for this puzzle. If you want to get a prime number, excluding two, it's going to have to be odd. And so you can't have two evens next to each other. And so one of the, the easiest filters early on is to realize they have to alternate odd, even, odd, even. That'll come back again in a moment as well. And so that, oh, Britain it didn't even do the one where you just swap the five and the seven. This one, two, three, and then an eight. And, oh, two fours. <laughs> okay, that's a mistake in the presentation. That is a problem to be solved by the viewer. Fix that for me. Let me know in the comments. So, <laughs> you wouldn't think I'm doing this late on Saturday morning, would you? Okay, so Wendy here did it by hand, and Deanna, who go helps me go through all the stuff that people send in, wanted to give Wendy a bonus award for the neatest handwriting of anything that was sent in. Um, but uh, no such award exists, so sorry Wendy and Deanna. And uh, what well Wendy uh, found, this is 138. So I say different, you can, we were accepted uh, going forwards or backwards. You can do the mirror image, I guess. You can just reverse the order and obviously it still works. Arguably it's the same solution. So you could say there are only 70 solutions um, in theory and you can just do them um, both ways around. Uh, there's no other ways to cycle them though. Get to that in a moment. So thank you, Wendy, for sending in the vast majority of them. Rob made a whole website where not only can you do this for pairs adding to primes, you can change it to squares, you can change it to Fibonacci numbers, you can go triangle numbers, you don't have to be two in a row, you can go up to any number you want. Oh, and you can use this to verify. I said, when did the puzzle video, that I was like, I think there might be two solutions for 12. There are way more. I don't know where I read that. I use the word think if either I've not verified something myself or I'm not 100% certain of the source where it came from and I should have been more clear I was not certain I just heard a rumor there were two for 12 there are way more and you can check out Rob's website I'll link to it in the description if you want to verify that for yourself if you trust Rob or do it yourself the long way Howard um, did it for all the lengths up to 11 
and they worked out what percentage of possible permutations have this property and that I was, I've not thought about it too much, but for seemingly obvious reasons, seems to be approaching zero because the number of valid solutions is going to grow slower than the total number of permutations. In my humble, hand wavy way, I think that's the case. And so they did uh, all the solutions and they've just printed out from their code the last solution they found for each of these. They also worked out if you can do it as a cycle. So I said before, we accepted mirror images of the same solution. If you could form a complete cycle, then you would be able to start and stop anywhere. However, as you can see, you don't, you only get cycles for every second one. And so there are no cycles whatsoever for the one to nine, an odd number of values that I set. But if you did it to eight or you did it to 10, then there are cycles. There are 32 for eight and 960, wow, for 10. And that comes back to the odd, even, odd, even problem. If you've got consecutive numbers from one and you've got an odd number of them, you're not gonna have an equal number of odds and evens, and so you can't form a loop with alternating odd, even, odd, even, which is why every second one is knocked out um, of that. Great, ah, really nice bit of maths. Howard, good work, love what you're doing there. Uh, this is the honorary Google Sheets mention. Big fan of spreadsheets, big fan of Google Sheets. I think it's got more rows than Excel. Mm, let's not do that now. So uh, Cal here um, uh, made a Google Sheet that would uh, do it, and they, theirs works up to 12. So good work there, love that. Uh, Alberto made a video. Actually, I think I can skip through this if we want to speed it up a little bit. They looked at using a grid. So this, again, was pairs. You have to pair an odd with an even. They looked at all the ones which do give primes, and then you've got to find two per row and two per column to get a valid solution that you can then work your way through. Really nice. And again, they do it for much, much bigger values. They go up into the 20s, I think. So I'll link to their video below. It's a really nice way to visualize it. I enjoyed that immensely. Uh, Hagen wrote a whole paper looking at Hamiltonian. Well, Hamilton, they said, paths. I like their paper because every single chapter is named after a musical, including, of course, Mamma Mia, and indeed, Mamma Mia, here we go again. So I will link uh, to their paper below. Great titling work. Love it. Um, a bunch of code was uh, sent in. So I'm going to um, show you the code. Fiaka4 on Twitter um, sent this through. So there's all the code they did. What I really like is, I've mentioned so the Hamilton thing from before. If you get a Hamiltonian path on a uh, network graph, technically, then that goes through every single vertex once. And so that's what you're looking for. You're looking for a path. So if you link together every pair of numbers, which add to a prime number, you're then looking for a Hamiltonian path through that network. And I did see on Twitter, someone was like, they're like a university lecturer and they're like, someone showed up uh, to the help session, which no one often does, but they were only there because they wanted help on how to find a Hamiltonian path on a graph so they could solve this puzzle, which I think is great. I'm encouraging people to go to their university uh, tutorials. That's excellent. Uh, and so what I like about this one here is they an animated all the different solutions which you can find. Uh, this is the case one to nine, and they're all skipping around. Really, really nice. Love what they're doing there. And um, other people animated as well. So David here did some cool animations showing you all the links, and then going through, I think I can skip through in this, and then showing all the different Hamiltonian paths, and then one by one, putting them off to the side, and so you get the whole lot. Look at that! Isn't that cool? And then they did it for more. So that's the case uh, going up to 10. As you can see, a lot of solutions. Great job, David. Honorable coding mentions, so Deanna and Oliver have decided that Joshua and Theo for C++, hmm, oh, and Ratchet, oh, there you go, JavaScript and, wow, my goodness, Joshua, slow down. Uh, Tom generalized it to look at square numbers, so the first n square numbers as opposed to just regular old-fashioned integers, and they um, found a few solutions, and they did have the, they, well, they came across is the same observation as before with the odd even thing, but they noticed that because 81 sticks out on its own in all of these uh, in the network, there's no way to do a cycle because it's a dead end. And so by the time you get out there, you can't get back. And so actually there's a whole world of mathematics about how you find different paths on different graphs, um, which I will uh, leave for you all to look into. Uh, Deanna mentioned we haven't done the um, leaderboard in the video for a while. So I said, fine, we'll do the top 20. Here you go, there you are. Congratulations everyone who was in that top 20. It's, gr oh, no, okay, there's a slower version. Uh, David and Anton, still reigning supreme at the top there. Uh, Zatka, Jason, George, and other people 
whose usernames can or cannot be found. That's their actual username. That's very funny. Well done. Um, so thank you everyone who's still joining in. Uh, this week was some people's first entries. And so actually some of the, what was it? Cal's um, Google Sheet. There were definitely some first entries. Sorry, I should have mentioned as we went along. Bit of a rush this time. Uh, who had sent in um, for the first time. So it's great that people are still getting involved. I had a great time playing with this puzzle and messing around with it. I'm a Hamiltonian um, graph kind of person. So actually, my, I mentioned this last time in my book, uh, Things to Make and Do in the Fourth Dimension, that I go into similar puzzles to this. This is the book I mentioned I'm in passing when I set the puzzle. And I love looking for the path on graph. Great fun, great fun. Okay, um, uh, one last thing, just wrapping up. This is slightly off topic. I've got a show coming up. This is a Mass Inspiration Show. It's giving you all enjoy puzzles. And normally I don't promote anything in these videos, but um, we're doing a whole bunch of these shows. We normally do them live. We're doing them online for high school students. So if you're a secondary school student anywhere in the world, you can, or you're a teacher, you can get a school pass. Uh, it costs, this all costs money, by the way, because um, we got <laughs> we got bills to pay. And so uh, you can get a, a school pass to the shows. You can get a home pass if your school's not doing it or you want to force any young people who live in the same house as you uh, to watch this. We've done the first of six. And this one here, this is the USA show. We're doing it at a, a better time for shows, uh, for schools in the US to watch it. This will have Grant from 3Blue, One Brown. It'll have me. It'll have my friend Eugenie, who did the... Um, VFX on Interstellar and Harry Potter and a bunch of, you know, Man of Steel, very, very cool films. Uh, very cool person, Eugenie. Um, and it's going to be an amazing show. And Simon Singh, the math author, will be there doing it. And so we put these shows together. And if you do want to give us some money to join in one of these live shows and you can, there's interactive stuff going on. Actually, we're using a very similar um, back end to what we use for these puzzles. Oliver, who works on um, the puzzles also um, does this for us. There you go. So you can check that out. Anyway, that's me. Thank you so much for waiting an extra day for the solution. I very much enjoyed going through the maths this time, and I'll see you next time.